The gang's all here. Is this yeah. it? This is the wall. When did this fall over? A couple um, weeks ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. So during that spring they thaw, heard it, they heard it at like. Uh, I mean, she, she said, said she got up at 5 a.m. and came out here and she heard it and then she left for work and she seen she, it. She heard it crash. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing with these walls. When they go, they give you every indication and then they pop like a balloon. They just, one day, they're up. The next day, boom. They, this is what happens. Yep. Are, we, are we removing and replacing the entire wall? Yes. What are we using? Versa lock, standard, tan. Tan, nice. All right. Blaine. What's your game plan today? We're gonna unload. We're gonna take down that wall and. You gonna take the whole wall down first? Well, I mean, it's not a very tall wall. Thank you. Yeah, we're gonna demo block and get them delivered. Oh, okay. He's gonna go dump a trailer and get rocks for us. Okay. And then we should have a load for him when he dumps the rock. Okay. And you got a, you got probably the best crew we've had in years. These guys are. Oh yeah. That's the, we're I, all I, back together. When finally. I started, I started with him. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. I that's know. How years ago. Was it that? Yeah, many years seven eight ago? years ago. Yeah. That's how time flies. Yeah, totally. Isaiah, introduce well, no yourself. Hurt, right. I'm Isaiah. Uh, I'm new here. And you First are. Day. Uh, related how? I'm related to uh, my uncle Stan with. Uh, Drew, <laughs> nephew. Uncle Drew. And yep. Drew, introduce yourself. I'm Andrew. Nephew. Yep. And back. He's back again. Back again. Back in the saddle. And we got Alex. We got Tim. We got the whole gang. All right. We're going to go hit the road. Let's get the, the job rolling. Four guys look at one piece of equipment. And it sounds like crap. Just need some 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 uh, yeah, maybe refurbisher we'll, spray. It needs some WD-40. Yep. Exactly is what it needs. Yeah. Warms if, up a little WD bit. WD-40 doesn't fix it, nothing will. Let it if WD-40 doesn't fix it, DW-40 will fix it. JB-80 will. JB-80. You know why? Because it's twice as nice. That's right. Clear no so conflict. Said center point, I thought, was gas. Everything center else... Center point NXL does does gas. Everything else is clear no conflict. Sewer, water, uh, telephone. Good. But then you get to Excel, it doesn't give a description of what it is. When well, did you mark it? Over. Last Wednesday. So they've had a <coughs> five days, seven days. Five working days. Well, I don't even see where they. Last did they mark too. anything else? Did they actually mark anything? I see nothing marked. They just put clear, no conflict. Did they even come to the right address? The they marked over there. Yeah, they marked that one. I mean, those could be also other things, yeah. but. A uh, different email from CenturyLink. And then you scroll down, describe dig area of your locate has been checked, and it's clear. Okay. We'll just hand dig behind right there because obviously we see the valve coming in right there or the meter. So the gas line, yeah. Yeah. So we'll just hand dig a swath back there down to the footing and uh, be done with it. Yep, exactly. So the first thing we got to do when we're prepping a retaining wall to rebuild it is to dig out the old wall. But there's some do's and don'ts to that. The first don't is don't over excavate. Don't dig too deep. Make sure you know exactly how deep you need to go. And for a retaining wall like the one you see in the video, we need six inches of rock plus one block, which is six inches buried. That means we've got to go one foot below grade and we use the sidewalk as our grade elevation. So everywhere you see the sidewalk, we dig that trench carefully one foot below, making sure that we don't, don't go too deep. If we do go too deep, We've got to backfill it and we've got to compact extra hard. Otherwise, not right away, but a year or two down the road, your retaining wall, instead of being flat and level, will dip on you. Stan, I found gold, and it's and it's gold that 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 we as as uh, excavators find, 
and get it. Oh, that's a good one. You're not a rock hound now, are you? Oh, I've been, I've been, look at that. That's an agate. There's an agate. Ooh. It feels so good to be working, but not plowing. Yeah. Oh, oh God. God. Dude, dude. Snow blowing in Minneapolis for other uh, county buildings. You know, I bet my ma's, they just got eight inches. Terrible. I was, I was just plowing here just a couple days ago. All right, I'll put the forks on quick and just kind of get it out of the way so we got less hazards and then I'll start kind of getting the rock we use is three quarter clear rock that means the rock is three quarter inches big and it's angular in nature it's not rounded so as soon as you set it in place it tends to lock and stay in place but then we hit that rock with a plate compactor one of the things you don't want to use is P rock P rock never locks in place just by its very nature, it's tiny little pebbles, circular, and they tend to shift and roll, meaning your wall will never really finally get into that comfortable position that you want it to be in. Another good alternative, if you don't have three-quarter clear rock available, is class five. And what class five is, is, is just a three-quarter inch rock all the way down to fines, and that will pack like a slab of concrete. But let's just watch what happens next. To increase our precision with the straightness of the wall, we actually streamline the back of the block, not the front. The reason we do that is the back is ma machine faced, the front is split faced. So the front has a rough face to it, and by its very nature it has a slight undulation to it where the back has a perfectly straight and level edge to it, and that's what we use to make sure that our walls all line up. Stringline the back, not the front. Now one of the things to notice during this segment is the way that it's being based. Each block is individually laid and leveled. And then once that block is leveled, it gets leveled to the block next to it and to the block next to that. We use a combination of a short level and then a longer four foot level to make sure that all of these blocks all line up. What, man? It's blocks to F. I think this one's gonna break bad, Blaine. Okay. I think this one's gonna break bad. Let's see if I can save it. Ooh. Never mind. So if you look down at the retaining wall in this segment, you will see that there's no seam in it. Some wall caps by their very nature have this weird v-shaped pattern and it's just a really dirty look stuff gets caught in there weeds grow up and it doesn't leave you a nice clean edge it's pretty easy on a straight wall like this to have the caps all line up with no seam but when you start to go around a corner that's when we have to hand chisel or hand saw each block to make sure that we eliminate that gap that gap is never allowed in our retaining wall Here's a nice close-up view of what the base rock looks like. It is the exact same material that we use for the drainage behind the retaining wall. We always prefer three-quarter clear rock. I said earlier you can use recycled class 5, but you can't use it in the drainage zone. Let's be clear on that. We use this rock for both our drainage and our base, and it's worked perfectly for 20 plus years. And we go heavy on it. Cheap insurance. Rock is just cheap insurance. I'll get this spread around right here. We'll see where we're at. I'll bet you we could get rid of some more, like right in front of where that saw is, probably too.
As a general rule of thumb, we hold the drainage down about four to six inches below the top of the retaining wall. And that last four to six inches gets filled up with native soils. That way, if everything blends back together, and if the customer wants to grow green grass, they can. If they want to put plants in, they can. Good. So if a video like this helped you out, you know what helps me out is a comment, a like, or a share. That goes a long way. And you know what else I would love to hear from you guys is what kind of videos do you want to see down the road? Do you want to see more how-tos like this, more job site videos, more product reviews, trade shows, or a mixture of all of them? Let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. God bless you guys. Go get them, and I hope you enjoy your day. Well, that's that. On to the next one.